Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and actually this is a correction to uh, one of Leela's opening repertoire videos. Um, not a whole one of course but uh, just one of the lines that uh, Leela recommended has got a hole in it. It was pointed out by uh, one of the viewers uh, in the comments and uh, well I had a good look at it and it seems to be incredibly true. So let's have a look how that all happened. Actually very very nice uh, lines. So this is uh, the Sicilian Khan. So C5 Knight F3, E6 Knight C3, A6 D4 takes takes and now queen c7 and this is the the most uh, popular line of the uh, sicilian khan so leela recommended uh, white's most popular reply bishop d3 and then uh, knight f6 which is also black's most popular reply and now uh, castles is uh, white's most popular move as you could imagine uh, recommended in um, a number of uh, different books um, but queen e2 was leela's suggestion which hasn't been played that much it's the third most popular move behind uh, seven castles um, but it's very nice. I mean, it, um, it gives White the opportunity to delay uh, castling. So White could castle queenside or castle kingside. And at the same time, you've got uh, all sorts of threats like, for example, um, uh, e4 to e5. So um, here, uh, the normal move is to play uh, d7 to d6. But Leela recommended bishop d6, which was... Uh, yeah, you know, quite uh, unusual. And uh, that has not been played very much, um, but it has been played by a number of strong players. And uh, well, Leela's recommendation was uh, to play um, Bishop E3 and the lines continued, quite unclear. Slightly better for white, but um, uh, still very interesting. But um, yeah, the, uh, the YouTube viewer pointed out that um, um, Knight DB5 was very, very strong for white. And um, yeah, I was uh, um, a little bit surprised because uh, I've seen that the line just scores about 50% for white and uh, yeah, some strong players have played this as black so I assumed that it couldn't be that serious. And yet, um, yeah, I mean basically uh, Stockfish's uh, main line um, with some great defensive plays about 1.2 for white and uh, well against Leela's main line, the line that Leela was intending, uh, both Komodo Dragon and Stockfish end up uh, between plus five and plus seven. So um, pretty big stuff. So um, what is happening here? Well, um, obviously Black takes the knight and then knight takes b5. Now um, Black's got to keep on going because queen c6, we would just take, take and go e5, get the knight back and we've got better pawn structure, two bishops. Um, yeah, weak dark squares in Black's position. So after um, knight takes b5, Black pays queen a5, bishop d2 and bishop b4, which saves the extra piece. White keeps on going, bishop b4, queen b4, c3. And of course, you know, the, the big threat is to, uh, is to go um, knight c7. So um, uh, black's got to defend that, and so queen c5 is natural, keeping um, a hold of, uh, of d6 and c7. White plays e5. And now, um, yeah, this line has been played quite a bit. Actually, um, uh, it was played already in 2011 by Gawain Jones. And Gawain's a really good theoretician, so uh, could well be that he knew an awful lot even then. Um, knight to g4 is the line that Stockfish advocates. Basically, give the piece back, get the e5 pawn. Um, Gawain played um, uh, castles, which is very good. f4 has been played, that's the third strongest move. Um, Stockfish's best line is just to take the knight. Uh, queen takes e5, king d2, which has been played already in the game uh, Predojevich Romanov in 2005, actually. And um, yeah, this is just very pleasant for, uh, for white. Um, uh, h5, queen h4, g5, queen c4, castles, rook e1 is, um, uh, is Stockfish's line. Queen f6, queen d4 takes and takes and actually black's done a, a pretty decent job of uh, surviving this but well yeah i mean these pawns are uh, somewhat weak and um yeah white's got active pieces nicely placed uh, for the ending you know it should be a, a pleasant advantage for white but it's not uh, completely hopeless even if stockfish does give it a, a 1.23 for white um so what other lines do we have um funnily enough um, um instead of uh, knight d5 um, knight g8 has featured in a few games, but yeah, 
Oh. <laughs> I, I don't really think we're too worried about that one there. Uh, B4 is uh, is very very strong, and um, uh, Queen C6, Bishop B4, Queen B6, Knight D6 check. You know, Black's just completely tied up here, and uh, um, yeah, it's about the the world's worst version of anything you could possibly have. So um, uh, what Leela wanted though, Leela wanted to play the move Knight D5. Which, to be honest, you know, looks the most principled, keeping the peace. And after knight d6 check, um, then um, we have king to f8. That was Leela's move. Uh, king to e7 has been played already. This was a game Solskis against Krainis, but uh, queen h5 is uh, is horrific because you're also threatening uh, queen g5 check, you know, and then uh, afterwards queen takes g7. So uh, this is very, very worrying. Um, you're also threatening queen takes f7 check, of course. Um, King d8 was what Stockfish and Komodo uh, wanted to do, which is kind of, uh, you know, abandon ship, <laughs> really, because, uh, of course, uh, um, f7 is hanging. So uh, castles, not even bothering to take it yet. Check, King c7, knight h8. Um, queen f8, trapping the knight, is um, uh, Stockfish and Komodo's main line. And now b4, knight f4, just grabbing the bishop pair. Uh, queen takes h8 and now uh, well Komodo wanted a4 with about plus five and Stockfish wanted uh, here and b5 with about plus seven but uh, you know it just looks horrific doesn't it two pieces for the rook but you've got uh, two pawns as white and um, yeah and black's pieces are just not moving so that's not what Leela wanted um, you know Leela obviously you know uh, Leela's thinking that this is drawn and uh, it's um, uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it's basically uh, um, going to try and keep the peace and it thinks that it can survive this attack. So it played uh, King F8. And um, <clears throat> now it gets quite important. Why well, it has to be quite accurate. Um, funnily enough, I found uh, on gchess.com, I found uh, a 2011 article by Richard Palliser, um, uh, which recommended Queen F3. Um, but actually there's, um, there's this move, F5 takes... And then knight f6, which is a great move. And uh, that move uh, Richard had missed in his article a long time ago. Um, and the idea is simply that you're just going to uh, um, take this pawn on e5 simply. And uh, if you take on f6, then just queen takes d6, takes, takes. And actually black is completely fine, actually winning. Um, so um, obviously, you know, it always takes a, a little bit of effort. Your king's a little bit weak, but basically black's just a piece up. Um, castles queen side um is better but after rookie one after queen takes c5 rookie one and queen c5 there were various lines uh, um Stockfish was finding some draws by repetition but there was nothing more than that so um uh, actually queen f3 is not the best move there but there is queen to h5 here which is very unpleasant we go g6 and then queen h6 check and the black king goes to g8 now, funnily enough, there's been a really high-class game here. Uh, Kazim Zhanov, uh, Rustam is a uh, former FIDE world champion and uh, also Fabi Fabiano Caruana's uh, long-time second, not anymore, but uh, for a very long time. And uh, against uh, Sergei Rublevsky, very strong Russian grandmaster, played in uh, Moscow 2007. And uh, that went h4, knight c6, h5, knight takes c5, white resigned. So I'm hoping that that's a blitz game. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a little bit serious. Uh, not quite sure what happened there. But um, Stockfish wants castles, knight c6. And here, actually, uh, we are still in mainline theory. And um, this was a correspondence game um, where um, White played uh, the rather weak move, rookie one. And after knight takes e5, then, uh, yeah, White didn't have very much at all there. Um, now, if, you're, uh, if you've got your creative boots on, you might spot the move knight e8 with a gorgeous threat of queen g7 but actually queen f8 is a very nice defense attacking this knight on the eight and uh forcing the exchange of queens so that just wins but once you've spotted that idea it doesn't take too long before you uh, might suspect that this is quite dangerous b4 novelty uh plus minus actually uh so queen takes c3 and now knight e8 
Um, threatening queen takes g7, there's only one move, which is queen e5. You know, the really bizarre thing about it is that, uh, you know, this knight is on e8, but it's curiously impervious, you know, because, uh, well, the king's on g8, it's blocking in the rook on h8, he can't get across. And, of course, this rook on a8 has got the bishop c8 blocking, and, uh, well, I mean, these two pawns are, uh, are blocking the bishop. So, uh, you know, how on earth do you get to that knight on e8? And, uh, well, actually, from this move on, uh, Leela's at 0 0.79 evaluation now. I mean, um, on move 8, assessing uh, the complications after it said 0 0.03, it thought it was going to be a draw by repetition. Now 0.79, uh, which is a pretty serious advantage, you know, on Leela scale. Um, but um, still not quite uh, showing quite the insight that uh, Stockfish and Komodo show. I think uh, Stockfish is getting to plus 9 or something at this point. The key thing is now, um, how does white continue? Because, uh, uh, well, I mean, I've been saying how difficult it is to attack the knight, but there are ways, of course, um, namely, in actual fact, knight c7 to uh, get rid of this knight. So what um, Stockfish tries to do is just to knock that queen off this uh, a1 h8 diagonal. Um, now, there's a lot of different moves. They all tend to transpose together. I think Stockfish's main move was queen b2. Leela's is queen c3, but it all goes to the same. Just takes a few more moves. We just keep on hitting the queen. Obviously, you can't do anything like this because I've got queen g7 checkmate. Um, so queen b2, rook b1, queen e5, rook e4, queen c3, rook c1, queen b2, and now rook c1, which transposes back into uh, Stockfish's main line. What's Black's, uh, what's, uh, Black's problem here? What's White's threat? White's threat is simply Rook E5. Whoops, Rook E5, sorry about that. Um, so blocking the A1, H8 diagonal and preparing Queen G7 um, checkmate. Yeah, what do you do? If you go uh, Rook takes A2, which looks tempting to go Queen takes F2, I just go uh, Rook E2. And uh, well, what do you do? If you go uh, Queen C3, I just go Rook E5 again. Ha <laughs> ha! And then go there. If you go Queen D4 to try and keep some pressure on F2, then I just take on A2. And of course, you still can't take there because of Queen G7 mate. So um, what Leela comes up with, and this is, you know, we're still following uh, Stockfish's uh, main line here on move seven. <laughs> so, and Komodo's as well, you know, I mean, uh, just incredible. Knight C7 is the move. And the idea is distract the knight away from E8 and get some counterplay. Um, so, uh, but we just swap off the rooks, takes, takes, check, bishop F1. And once again, um, uh, well, you know, we're uh, in this uh, same sort of situation um, as before. Um, actually, White's threatening the move rook a8, attacking the uh, the bishop on um, on c8. Um, so what uh, what does Black do? Queen takes b4, just uh, looking hopefully to do something like queen f8, uh, just uh, get rid of the queen and uh, who knows, maybe you'll survive. I mean, Black does have um, uh, three pawns now for the piece. So, you know, if you could sacrifice a piece exchange off the queens, you'd be all right here. But yeah, White comes back to e8, um, threatening queen g7 and also threatening knight f6. So we have to move our queen uh, uh, back to the long diagonal. And then the same drill begins. Rook d2, queen c3. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're still in, uh, in Stockfish's uh, main line at move, um, at move seven here, which is, you know, obviously just absolutely horrific, horrific and amazing and frightening and all those sort of things. So uh, G4 is Stockfish's move here, threatening uh, G4 to G5 and, um, um, and then Knight F6 checkmate. Or we checkmate very soon. Um, so um, Stockfish, uh, Stockfish's main line is GF. We take on f6, on f5 rather, f5, and then this gorgeous move, bishop e2. And uh, what's uh, uh, White's idea? Well, if you don't do anything at all, I'm just going to go bishop h5. The black king is completely encircled, and then we'll move our rook across over to d3 to g3 and uh, deliver mate. Uh, we've also got uh, stuff like knight f6, of course, just because uh, the kings, all the king's escape squares are blocked. Beautiful, really beautiful. So um, uh, Stockfish's main line goes king f7, check, king e7, queen g5. Lovely, now the knight on the 8 is defended by the bishop on h5. King f8, knight f6. And whatever you do, we check, check, and take the rook. And then move the rook to protection. And, uh, well, white is uh, just uh, a rook for two pawns up. And uh, obviously a completely winning position here. Black's got no counterplay against the white king. 
and uh, well, White still got quite a few uh, dangerous-looking checks uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the making. And uh, that is uh, Stockfish's. I don't, I'm not even sure that Stockfish's end position. I think it carries on for another another ten moves, but uh, we don't need to worry about those. But nine point five four is the uh, is the final evaluation of uh, of Stockfish. Amazing, huh? Amazing. Um, virtually, it looks well. Yeah, you know, not virtually, not forced completely this line from uh, from move seven, but um, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, still, you know. Uh, uh, with a couple of uh, choices from Leela along the way, then uh, yeah, basically a complete win for White on um, on move eight. Very very interesting. I mean, what did Leela miss? I mean, simply Leela uh, didn't assess um, this this type of position very well and uh, thought that it was going to survive, or that White had at most a draw by perpetual just chasing the Black Queen and uh, didn't see the um, yeah the tactics that uh, that uh, you know proceed from that. And of course, you know, that's one of Stockfish's amazing strengths, really, that it can uh, it can see those tactics from so far away. I have to say, I'm slightly I, I am surprised at just how virulent it turns out to be. And uh, what's also surprising is that, you know, I, I was thinking, you no, know, surely this must be somewhere in a book. But uh, I've looked at uh, everything that I've got uh, on the Sicilian in my uh, in my library and I can't find it. So if anyone does have this in a book somewhere or if anyone's pointed it out in an article, I thought maybe Chess Publishing. So that's why I was looking on the. Uh, on gchess.com but um yeah didn't uh, didn't find it so um yeah might just be uh, a novelty that's uh, that's known by um, by a lot of good players but uh, just hasn't made its way through into um into uh, um chess literature until now so uh, there we are oh uh, just one uh, one last thing uh, if you follow my twitter feed You'll see that uh, I tweeted that, um, uh, well, I like gchess.com a lot. Um, a lovely site for um, checking lots of different information from all sorts of different sources. And uh, actually the TCEC games are in there now. So you can uh, check games from Lightchess, from chess.com and also from the TCEC. So uh, absolutely wonderful resource there. So do take a look at that. But there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. If you like the video, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, write a comment. Even take a look at my new book, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which has got lots and lots of uh, amazing engine games and insights on how to work with engines. And otherwise, keep your eyes on this channel. We keep on coming along with more and more great chess engine content. Uh, hopefully see you at the next video.